They're bringing all kinds of ethnic foods to Washington, D.C., all from a moving vehicle. I think there's a certain uh, you know, mystery. What food truck is going to be there tomorrow? And when they go outside, they say, all right, I'm going to try the macaroni and cheese or the crab today. I went to um, Lily Pad on the Run food truck, and I am eating some delicious Ethiopian food. I got these delicious looking meatball slider things. We went to the Red Hook lobster truck and had lobster rolls. I got the Korean chicken. I'm a Far East taco regular. Food trucks in D.C. have used social media as a way of promoting themselves to consumers. They use Twitter to announce their locations for the day. There's a number of food trucks today at State Department and L'Enfant Plaza. Right? In those two particular areas, there is no brick and mortar restaurants, but there's 12 to 15 food trucks there. Consumers who work in office buildings down, downtown and have a, a short lunch break, it's perfect. You run out there, you grab a bite, and you go back in the same way that you know, if you go to Chopped, the brick and mortar salad restaurant, you go in there, they're efficient, it's fast. The growing popularity and presence of food trucks has frustrated many owners of traditional brick and mortar restaurants. Some restaurants were even forced to shut their doors. Since the food truck explosion, I've seen six restaurants close just within the three blocks. Restaurant owners cite the cost of rent based on location as one of their largest expenses. Food trucks can take advantage of these same prime locations without paying the high cost of rent. Brick and mortar restaurant, especially in a DC area, would have required many hundreds of thousands of dollars to start. Uh, the startup costs for food truck business are typically in about the $100,000 range. The District Department of Transportation has issued a set of proposed regulations regarding the food trucks. One proposal states that food trucks can only park in an area with at least 10 feet of unobstructed sidewalk space. If this regulation goes into effect, that means that food trucks cannot park here in Farragut Square. With the 10-foot rule, food trucks would not be allowed at 8 out of the 10 most popular locations. Other proposed regulations include creating designated parking areas for the food trucks, allowing food trucks to park at meters only for the allotted time period, and letting individual communities create a public space plan for where food trucks are permitted. The two-hour meter period is problematic for a lot of the trucks because it's just not quite enough time uh, given the need to set up and break down your truck. I would love to see uh, meter laws get passed because what these food trucks do is they just uh, squat outside of the restaurants and they keep filling the meters, filling the meters. Restaurant owners, the Food Truck Association of Metropolitan Washington, and many others have submitted comments on the proposed regulations. Everyone should be able to compete, whether it's a brick and mortar with another brick and mortar or a food truck with a food truck or you know, c competing against each other. Um, and consumers are better off. The comment period for the proposed regulations ended on November 13th. The Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs will take these suggestions into consideration before coming to a final conclusion. Reporting for American University, I'm Shafali Kapadia.